Greetings from coronavirus quarantine. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to do my best to deliver some expectations that I have for you on your IB presentation. I know we're going to be off a couple weeks, maybe even more, but I want to give you something to be thinking about in the meantime, uh, getting some stuff down on paper so that whenever we re reconvene, you're not out in the cold with where you're supposed to be on this presentation. Uh, other teachers will also be giving you some assignments. I hope that uh, you'll get those. They should be coming out in text form via Remind. And when you get those, they should be light, easy, manageable. Uh, one per week is what our goal is right now as we get more information as to how long we're going to be uh, extending this break. Uh, things may change, but for now, I'm counting on one um, one lesson per week. So what I want you to do for theory of knowledge, we were working on our presentations and I had asked you to come up with a sort of topic that's researchable and hopefully you've already started your research on that topic. Now this is the part that I really wish I was there in person to help you with. It's a bit difficult. Um, you need to tie it to a real life situation. Some of you, for many of you, this will be fine. For some of you, you need to change topics. That's okay. Um, but you've got to take what you're thinking about and apply it to a real life situation. Let me give you some examples of how this might work. Um, many of you, I had a few kids pick soccer as a topic and in particular, you know, one thing or other about soccer, but I'm, I'm going to delve into that. There's, there's a few things you can do with soccer that tie into real life situations that are specific. You have to be specific situation. It can't be just, you know, Hey, the world cup, that's not specific. A uh, specific year, specific place, World Cup, that's, that's what we're looking for. So, for instance, uh, if you wanted to do soccer and the World Cup, get even more specific than that. Uh, how about its impact on communities through the Brazil World Cup and the building of the stadium in Brazil? Because that impacted a lot of communities. That's a real-life situation. That is something that actually happened, the building of that stadium, and it did displace many people in the city. So that would be an example of a real life situation tied to soccer. Another thing you can do is fame and relationships. Now this is something I'm going to make up because I don't know soccer players, but let's just say you do how the fa Messi's fame changed his relationship with his father or something. I don't, I'm just making that up, but you need something very real, very specific, this player, this relationship, you can analyze fame and relationships through that real life situation. Another example might be uh, technology on culture. I had a few people doing how they now uh, have a computerized monitoring system to see if a goal is made or not. Um, you can see how technology, maybe people are afraid of it, maybe it's changing the culture of the game and the impact of technology on culture via that very real life situation of the new monitoring system in soccer. Uh, another example, electric cars. So a lot of people wanted to research those. Um, you can talk about how uh, nowadays there are more, there's easier access to recharging stations. And because of that, I think that has impacted the viability of electric cars, especially in the city. You can talk about how you can look at sales numbers and the accessibility to these recharging stations and how perhaps they have increased in tandem. I'm not sure if that's true. That'd be something to research, but that's a very real life situation. The building of these re recharge stations and the sales of cars, that's a real life situation. Uh, another example would be uh, emissions. You know, people say that electric cars are cleaner and that is the direct emissions from the car being cleaner. But if we compare that to the indirect emissions, the total emissions, like how much uh, are we put into the atmosphere to uh, use the coal to make the electricity to charge the cars? Are we simply moving the emissions from the car to the factory that makes the electricity, uh, factory, excuse me, power plant that makes the electricity? Uh, if so, are we actually helping? Are we helping because we're moving smog out of the city and displacing it to where there's not a lot of pollution? I'm not sure, but these are real life situations you can look at. Another one would be, um, you could look at, what's the guy's name? Uh, Elon Musk. You know, he's kind of a celebrity manufacturer at this point, an inventor. Does, does, you can look at the real life situation of Elon Musk being the face of the Tesla car and examine how the celebrity of a manufacturer contributes to the acceptance of a product. You know, the Tesla went from, electric cars went from being dorky nerd cars to being cool vehicles, largely because of 
uh, Elon Musk being the face of the company and how he rebranded it. I mean, it's similar to, say, uh, Michael Jordan's scenario with Air Jordans. And you can examine that all real life situations. They're not, you're not, you're not dealing in vagaries. You're dealing in with specific things that are happening. Now, for those of you who maybe what you were looking at will not work, there is no real life situation that, that you can find to correlate with the topic you are looking at, feel free to scrap it. Start with a new topic. And here, I didn't want to say this before because I knew I'd get everybody doing this because it'd be the least amount of work but I will allow you to take personal real life situations as your example. So if you would like, you can look at, um, you know, a Thanksgiving gathering that you had, but it has to be a real one. It can't just be Thanksgiving in general. It has to be last year's Thanksgiving. This is what happened. This was a thing that got me thinking or argument over politics. You may have a fam with a family member or one specific parent's act of love, you know, this thing that they did. It needs to be specific, it needs to be um, something that actually happened. And then once you've got that real life situation, I want you to take it one step further. You've got all week, write down your notes, get something written down, it doesn't have to be extensive. The next step further is simple. <clears throat> I want you to think about how you're going to analyze it from a TOK perspective. Uh, I'm gonna go through a couple of examples for each one, like the Brazil, Example, let's say you were looking at the building of that stadium. You could look at it from a point of view of economics, the total cost to the community and cost to individuals and discussion of who benefited economically from the building of the stadium and from the World Cup uh, being there and how long lasting those economic benefits have been or how long lasting the economic detriments have been. So. Or you could look at it from the point of view of power, political power. You know, it, was this an incentive to the wealthy at the expense of those with very little political power? These are all, um, th these are two ways you can look at one thing. So your real life situation, once again, you've got to look at it from a TOK perspective. So find your situation, analyze it from a TOK perspective. Let me give you another uh, example. Let's say you're looking at uh, total emissions of electric cars versus the direct emission from the car itself. If that interested you, you could look at that based on chemistry, you know, how it actually emits, how much comes from the car, how much is displaced at the power plant. Um, you can also look at it from geography, right? Like I said, maybe the smog's the same, the pollution's the same, it's just in different areas, and perhaps that is actually less of a detriment to the, uh, the atmosphere. I don't know. I don't know what you're going to find, but just some things to think about. Or if you were talking about, uh, say, your parents' act of love, you're doing one personal, you could look at that from a social science perspective. You know, was there communal pressure for that parent to act in that way? Was there pressure from another parent, pressure from you, uh, some sort of societal uh, pressure? You can look at it from natural science. Are there biological imperatives for parents to act in this way towards their children? You can look at it from a religious knowledge system. Um, the idea that there's a divine mandate or command to behave in such a way. I mean, the world's filled with stories. I'm sure you know some in your own family of people who were doing wrong and they found God and they changed their life and now they are better parents, better, better members of the family. Perhaps uh, you can look at it from that point of view. I'm not here to dictate how you are to look at your real life situation through the theory of knowledge, but you need to now take your topic, if you can, Put it in the context of a real life situation and then tell me how you're going to analyze that real life situation using a theory of knowledge approach. If you must change your topic, you can. And now you are allowed to use personal uh, real life situations as the basis of your analysis if you so choose. I'm not looking for any paperwork on this. I'm trusting you to jot down in your notebooks some of your thoughts on this, some of your approaches you may want to take, and have them ready to go next week when I give your next assignment that we're doing. This should be short and sweet. Next week we'll go to the next phase, and that way when, when we reconvene, hopefully in April, you'll have this ready to go and we can start working. Stay safe, wash your hands, stock up on food. We could be in for a long haul. See ya.